Good afternoon. This is Tara Lynn Kahn. I teach at Wichita Southeast High School and I am an eBoard member and I am delivering the UTW recap of the Board of Education meeting. Uh, Dr. Irving went through um, the scenarios and the feedback that uh, came from the surveys and um, she presented the parent and staff feedback and we had 3,413 parents responding, which represented 6,500 students. 28% were high school, 24% were middle school, 25% were grades three through five, and 23% were uh, students pre-K through second. 70% of the respondents had one caregiver who worked outside of the home, and of those who chose to respond to the surveys, 15% prefer online learning or remote learning, 32% preferred a hybrid approach, and 53% preferred an on-campus or in-person return. When looking at the hybrid option in more depth, 50% uh, wanted half day in school, half day at home, 51% voted for alter alternating days of the week, like st half of the students would attend Monday, Tuesday, ha the other half would attend Thursday, Friday. 23% preferred alternating weeks. 25% wanted elementary in school and secondary online. Now, the reason the numbers don't match up is because uh, the survey allowed the responders to an uh, answer one, two, three, or all four as options. Dr. Irving advised that in consulting with transportation, the AM PM split was not feasible. It was not feasibly possible uh, due to the number of students and routes. 45% um, of the parents placed importance on a cons having a consistent schedule if we have to go back to remote learning. 18% of them placed importance on dev having devices and internet connections. And 17% placed importance on having student work graded. Dr. Irving then turned to the staff responses and we had 5,372 members of the education community respond. 49% of them were classroom teachers. 24.5% were other certified employees such as librarians, counselors, nurses, etc. 3% of the respondents were administrators and 23% were classified employees. On the staff response, once again, they could choose one or all. So the numbers are a little different. 86% of the staff voted for physical attendance as long as safety measures were in place. 81% of the staff voted for the hybrid option and 60% of the respondents preferred alternating days instead of the AM PM. Dr. Irving reminded the board that the pandemic team, leadership team, has been working uh, since March on these options. This is a framework they have released. It's not a finalized plan. The team has developed a three-pronged approach allowing for pivoting to the next one as needed. They decided to focus on all, on site, all students referring to, returning to the classroom option. Uh, in this case, there would be a soft lunch the first week of school to allow for transitions and social and emotional assessment. Uh, for parents or students who do not feel comfortable returning to the classroom, um, the board approved a purchase of Education Imagine Academy uh, that will be offered as an alternative. Um, in the COVID, if the COVID-19 situation demands we move to a blended learning or hybrid, half of the students would attend in shifts on alternate days, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, Wednesdays would be used for professional learning, deep cleaning of the facility, and additional meetings with students who need more one-on-one -on -one instruction. Dr. Irving said that they had checked with uh, KSHSAA, Keisha, regarding eligibility of student athletes, and as long as they attend one class at the school, they could take the rest of their classes through Education Imagine Academy and still be allowed to compete. Safety is the key priority. A good test of the safety will be our graduation ceremonies in July. Uh, those ceremonies and uh, plans should be finalized by this coming Friday. On, May on Monday, July 20th, 
the team and district will release their plan. They have to wait until the state releases the guidelines on July 15th before they can finalize our approach. Board members asked questions and Ben Blankley asked about the stakeholder group of staff uh, with children in the district. How would they be accommodated? Staff would have to be in the building the entire week, but what about their own children? <coughs> Excuse me. The district is a microcosm of the greater community and safety measures would have to be in place. Mr. Blankley also addressed the 14% of staff who would not support an open campus. Would they be allowed out of their contract with no penalty or perhaps used as uh, EI educators? There's no answer to the question because uh, administration would have to check with legal. Dr. Irving admitted that depending on the final plan, the school calendar must be taken into account, such as four day weeks. This was a question that was brought up. Since the board approved purchasing devices for grades six through 12 students, uh, the internet contract has not been finalized yet. The hybrid or remote alternatives would be an easier transition this fall. Um, students and teachers would be encouraged to use the technology tool in the classroom as the, so they would know uh, what to do if they had to stay home. The board thanked Dr. Irving for her report and they look forward to the release of the plan on July 20th. Then they had the consent agenda and it passed seven to zero. Some of the items on the consent agenda was payment of um, AP exams and uh, looking at the uh, Child Development Center YMCA funding. There's gonna be an increase in cost next year. There were some uh, repairs and uh, for doors on a couple of elementary uh, buildings. East High needs some repairs. Um, they also approved uh, purchasing a cloud server through EduPoint and paying for additional insurance. The meeting then moved on to policy changes uh, where they updated language on policy 1464, which was student behavior, and policy 5113, which de deals with suspension and expulsion. Um, member Ron Rosales brought up the use of masks and asked would it violate the policy um, if masks are required inside the school setting there should be no profiling was his statement and then he asked well, what if a student refuses to wear a mask Dr. Thompson advised they need to check with legal regarding this issue uh, when they develop their guidelines for returning to the classroom uh, she uh, recognized there should be no holes in the policy <clears throat> the conversation then moved into operations and the discussion about moving board meetings from 6 p.m. to noon. Uh, if they did that, they would have to find a different space because North High uses the boardroom uh, for classes. Uh, there was some discussion on whether the BOE should change. Dr. Thompson had come up with a list of pros and cons and board members voiced their concerns. The consensus was it's a public board, so it should be open to the public, and a 12 o'clock meeting, noon meeting, prevents that. Majority were in favor of keeping the 6 p.m. time slot for the next year. They're going to vote on July 30th. Then Susan Willis went over the current budget, which ends today, and then advised on possible concerns and that plans are beginning for next year's budget. Um, Governor Kelly made adjustments to the state budget that kept education unharmed for the most part. Uh, there are a couple of items. Wichita will not be receiving matching funds for the Safe and Secure Schools grant um, because the state didn't fund it. And then the Tech Ed Transportation Reimbursement for students going to WSU Tech, um, that we would not be getting that. Uh, but uh, Willis was okay because it had less than a million dollar impact on our, on our budget. The contingency reserve goal from last meeting was achieved by moving unspent 2019 funds to 2021 fund. Willis advised that the district is still working on getting internet for students and families in reaction to the COVID-19 challenges. Uh, she believes it will cost approximately $6 million a year. Uh, her team is working with Sedgwick County uh, uh, with their CARES funding and then forming partnerships with other community groups for funding assistance. She will update the board at the next meeting. The board then went into executive session to meet with their attorney 
And that was the end of the meeting. Hope you have a good week.